As of 2021, there are only about 100 uncontacted native groups left in the entire world. But none of them are more isolated than the Sentinelese tribe. Located in the northern Andaman Islands of India, these indigenous people conscientiously separate themselves from the outside world. Today, we're going to take a look at everything we know about the world's most isolated tribe. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what other anthropological topics you would like to hear about. Let's head 800 miles southeast off the coast of India. The Sentinelese inhabit what is one of the most remote places on Earth. Their home, North Sentinel Island, is part of an Indian archipelago in the Bay of Bengal. Many of these islands are beautifully idyllic, but they've been greatly left alone because of the indigenous people that call them home. Along with the Sentinelese, the islands are known to be inhabited by the Onge, the Great Andamanese, the Jarawas, the Nicobarese, and the Champan. Anthropologists believe the Sentinelese people have lived on their island for more than 60,000 years, with virtually no contact from the outside world. By most estimations, neither their lives nor their culture have changed much in all that time. The first indication of their civilization and the island itself comes from 1771, when an East India Company ship called the Diligent spotted a multitude of lights upon the shore of North Sentinel Island. However, the crew took no interest and just sailed on. It was probably a good decision. In 1867, survivors of the wreck of the Nineveh were attacked on the shores of the island by what they described as naked, red-painted islanders who were armed with bows and arrows. That same year, a colonial officer named Jeremiah Humphrey visited the island and reported seeing the same islanders catching fish with arrows. Since those early visits, uninvited guests have regularly been attacked or killed by the natives. While not much is known about the Sentinelese people, experts do know some things about the way they hunt, gather, and eat. Anthropologists believe hunting is accomplished using bows and arrows, and that the tribe also fishes for sea life that includes, among other things, mollusks and mud crabs. Reports hold that the natives consume their meat and fish completely raw. This isn't a culinary preference exactly, it's actually due to the fact that they have yet to learn how to make fire. If they do need fire for something, the tribe must wait for lightning to strike and then keep the flame alight for as long as they can. The Sentinelese people also know nothing of agriculture, nor do they read or write. Reports have claimed that they can only count items of two or less, and that they describe anything above that as many. There are only a few kinds of shelter known to be on the island. Large huts that hold several families, and temporary beach dwellings that hold one nuclear family each. That being said, while this tribe greatly lives as it did thousands and thousands of years ago, there have been some advancements. For example, they're known to use metal that has washed up on shore to sharpen and accompany their weaponry. Unlike the other Andaman Islanders, the Sentinelese people have kept their language private, and not just from modern mainland types. Even natives from nearby islands are unfamiliar with the isolated tribe's tongue. One Andaman police chief, Dharmendra Kumar, noted that it would be impossible to communicate with his neighbors. He says, there are the language barriers. Nobody speaks the Sentinelese language. While a handful of explorers have tried to contact the Sentinelese people over the years, most attempts have ended in disaster and suffering. In the 1980s, many Sentinelese died during small battles with shipwrecked trespassers. To quell the danger, the government of India banned all visits to the island in 1997. The government now enforces a three-mile no trespassing radius around North Sentinel Island at all times. Photographing the islands and its inhabitants is similarly prohibited, and the bans are enforced by constant military patrols. As for the interlopers who do venture into the forbidden place, they usually face a barrage of stones and arrows. The Indian government forbids people from venturing close to North Sentinel Island, but poachers and fishers still explore the area. In 2006, two fishermen, Sundaraj and Pandit Tiwari, got drunk while piloting their boat near the island. The vessel drifted ashore after their anchor failed during the night. Other fishermen issued warning calls, but for whatever reason, they were ignored. The Sentinelese reportedly killed the two men for trespassing using axes. Allegedly, their dead bodies were first trussed up like scarecrows using bamboo and faced out to sea, but were buried sometime later in shallow graves. 
A helicopter came to retrieve the men, but locals greeted it with a hail of handmade weapons. The fishermen's remains were left behind. Hey, Weird History, we've got a message about Curiosity Stream. From award-winning exclusives and originals, Curiosity Stream features 35 collections of hand-picked programs by their experts. Curiosity Stream features thousands of shows with such topics as history, nature, science, food, technology, travel, and more. You can stream on any device, anytime, anywhere. It's just $14.99 for the whole year. Check out the link in the video description below. Or use the link curiositystream.com slash weirdhistory with code weirdhistory to sign up. As we all know, there are some people in this world who never think the rules apply to them. One of those people was Christian missionary John Allen Chow, who made his way to the Sentinelese Island on November 17, 2018, despite the fact that outsiders are explicitly banned from entering the area. Chow was hoping to convert the endangered tribe to his own religion, but when he approached the island, it's believed that they killed him with bows and arrows. Nobody knows exactly how it all went down. But six fishermen who were in the vicinity of the island claim they saw the Sentinelese drag a body and bury it on the beach. Authorities don't believe they'll ever be able to retrieve John Allen Chow's body, because any attempt to do so would risk both the lives of whoever was sent and the lives of the Sentinelese themselves. The tribal people do not have immunity to modern-day illnesses, and something as simple as a cold virus could wipe out the remaining 50 to 150 Sentinelese. Mr. Chow's body should be left alone, as should the Sentinelese, said Stephen Corey, director of Survival International. Despite the fate of Christian missionary John Allen Chow, the Sentinelese people do not actually attack all visitors. In fact, when anthropologist T.N. Pandit and his team approached the natives in the early 1990s, the tribe members dropped their weapons. Pandit had actually tried to make contact without success on previous occasions. While one of these early encounters yielded the first ever photograph of a Sentinelese tribesman, most of them just ended in volleys of arrows. This time, however, the Sentinelese were welcoming towards him. The anthropologist brought coconuts and other offerings. He later mused, they must have come to a decision that the time had come. Pandit felt the change in the Sentinelese posture towards him could not have happened on the spur of the moment. He also detected a note of sadness in them, which he felt too. According to Pandit, there was the feeling that at a larger scale of human history, these people who were holding back, holding on, ultimately had to yield. It's like an era in history, gone. After that visit though, something must have changed because the natives never welcomed another outsider. The Sentinelese aren't just hostile to people with ill intentions. They're equally uninterested in those that seek to help or aid them. For example, when the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami hit the region, some worried the Sentinelese got wiped out. The earthquake raised the whole island almost seven feet out of the water, exposing coral reefs and destroying local forests. It seemed unlikely to outsiders that the tribe would survive the natural disaster. A helicopter flew over the area to assess the damage, but Sentinelese tribesmen fired arrows at the chopper. Apparently, at least some of the islanders had survived. If you're wondering why the Sentinelese are so hostile to outsiders, you probably won't be surprised to learn it's due to past experience. In January of 1880, British explorers landed on North Sentinel Island to conduct a survey of the area. While they were there, they also decided to do one of the things 19th century British explorers did best, kidnap natives for their own purposes. However, they only found abandoned villages. After searching for days, the expedition party, led by 20-year-old Maurice Vidal Portman, finally encountered six Sentinelese people. They abducted all of them and sailed for Port Blair. Two elderly natives died in British custody. The four captive children survived. Eventually, the young adventurer returned the youths to the island with gifts. Portman eventually decided exploration of the island was ill-advised. He would later write, the Sentinelese's association with outsiders has brought them nothing but harm, and it is a matter of great regret to me that such a pleasant race is so rapidly becoming extinct. While poachers, fishermen, and missionaries are certainly a danger to Sentinelese culture, the greatest risk outsiders represent is their biological presence on the island. 
Or to put it another way, the natives probably wouldn't last long if they merely interacted with outsiders. Due to their long-standing isolation, they never built up defenses against minor germs. So something that's typically non-threatening to most folks may well cause extinction on the Bengali island. A touch, a sneeze, or a handshake could literally wipe out an entire civilization. Analyst Sophie Grigg notes, With the isolation comes extreme vulnerability. The Sentinelese are likely to have no immunity to diseases like the common cold or flu. In 2017, two poachers were caught hunting sea turtles on the illegal to outsiders tribal reservation. Reportedly, one had been intercepted nine times engaging in similar illegal activities, but was released on bail. Poaching on the reserve is highly illegal and punishable by mandatory fines and jail time. However, human rights group Survival International points to repeated instances of trespassing as evidence that Andaman authorities are not doing enough to protect the highly susceptible people. For those who doubt the wisdom behind the Sentinelese's decision to cut themselves off from the outside world, know that other Andaman indigenous peoples haven't fared nearly as well. By welcoming outsiders, many other tribes have been wrecked by development, disease, violence, and sexual abuse. The Sentinelese natives are steadfast in their desire for solitude. They don't want gifts or support from strangers. The Indian government has made all efforts to maintain that solitude. But poachers and tourists are still threats. So what do you think? How would you like to live in a completely isolated society? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.